and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're making salt soap and uh, I have done Pacific uh, sea salt soap in the past and I've also done Himalayan pink salt. Well, that's what we're doing today. We're going to use pink salt. Um, I got this from the Dollar Tree, $1.25 a bag. You have to get a case of it, but it was the best price that I've found on pink Himalayan salt. So that's the salt we're using today. I will share the full recipe down below. Um, we've done this before on the channel a few times. I always do a different fragrance and I figured I'd bring you along. Why not? Uh, one of the things about salt soap is it gets hard very quickly in the mold. So I like to do cavity molds when I do salt soap. You can do a loaf mold, but you've got to cut it really quickly, even while it's still warm. Um, and I just, I get busy and if I forget, it's so, anyway, I use a cavity mold and the molds I'm using today are my little sunflower molds. I got these from Amazon. Um, I think they're beautiful. They make a, just a really nice palm sized bar. So uh, the fragrance, let's talk about that. Uh, I'm going to be using Mimosa and Cardamom from Marouge, Canada. Uh, and they gifted me these fragrances to let me play around with. I've used them a couple times before and I'm still working my way through. They are fabulous. And one of the things I love about their fragrances is that they have all the information written on the front here, what percentages to use, the scent notes, uh, does it have vanillin? It's all written on here. It's so helpful and it smells fantastic. Let me just say that. Uh, so anyway, thank you, Marouge Canada. And uh, that's the scent we're using today. It's very, very nice. So I am not gonna be putting any other mica or coloring in the body of these soaps. This fragrance does have a 1% vanillin, so it might discolor a little, but the pink Himalayan salt gives a really beautiful sort of, um, well, not even pink, just a beautiful tone to the soap after the cure time. And I'm gonna let it do its thing. But what I am gonna do is come in after I unmold these with my little mica painting brush and paint the little seed portions on my sunflower with this gingerbread brown mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus, just cause I think it looks really pretty. Totally not necessary, I just wanna do it. So that's what we're doing. Um, talked about the salt Oh, this is going to be for the liquid portion it will be an aloe vera lye solution and then I will be putting coconut milk powder in the body of the soap so it's going to be an aloe and coconut because I just think that's fabulous combo uh, and that is about it I'm going to get everything pulled together we've done this before again the recipe will be down below um, and I hope you give it a try the salt bars are fabulous they don't dry your skin out there's a lot of common misconceptions they're great for face body I think they're fantastic so so i hope you do give the recipe a try and if you do let me know down below i have you know in the comments i would love to see if you've tried the recipe and how you like it so let's get everything pulled together and come back and make some pink himalayan salt bars all right it's soap additives time and let's put all the dry ingredients in here get them blended in and let them absorb fully the fragrance is already in here because i don't want to have to hassle with it and I've got my salt all measured out off to the side and just that gorgeous pink color. You know, that's gonna be the color in this. We're just gonna go for a really natural color. And then I will paint, you know, the mica on the little centers of my flowers when it's all said and done. But that's off to the side, all measured. Let's get the dry ingredients in here. I've got my colloidal oats, all the good skin benefits, I think, of oats, clay, and coconut milk. You know, these are just so wonderful. Um, I think salt bars are fantastic as a facial bar, body bar. I just love them everywhere bar. <laughs> I think they're great. There goes our coconut milk. All right, two tablespoons of each of the dry. Gonna get this blended and we'll come back when our aloe vera lye solution is all cooled off. With the aloe vera lye solution i did dissolve some cane sugar in here then did the aloe and water 50 50 split there's tessa silk fibers and no sodium lactate because the salt bars are hard enough so you do not need sodium lactate in this pot so i'm going to get up to a nice uh trace hopefully not too fast with this fragrance but uh because I want the salt to suspend. If you add your salt too early, it can just sink to the bottom and you don't want that. You want the salt all the way through. So this is a very full pitcher, but we'll be okay. So we're gonna go to a nice medium, well, light to medium trace, and then we'll get our salt in here and get to pouring. 
Oh, this fragrance smells so nice. It's just beautiful. And even with the heliotrope, uh, I do not find this to be a feminine fragrance at all. I think heliotrope is a flower. <laughs> um, I would definitely call this unisex. The cardamom, the tonka bean, it just smells great. The sandalwood, of course. All right, we got a little bit of a trace going on. I'm going to get the salt in here and blend it up. Oh, it looks like we're thickening, so I'm going to go ahead and hand stir the salt in, and then we will get it into the molds. Really full container. I should have this in a bigger container. <laughs> So all those little air bubbles coming up are from the salt mixing in. We're definitely thickening up here, so the salt will suspend beautifully. No problems there. There we go. Starting to see that pink come up. All right. Woo. Yeah, we're definitely thickening up. Let's get it in the molds. And it's only been a couple of hours, like four hours. That's one of the cool things about salt soaps is they get hard really fast. And that is why I use my cavity molds um, because if you're doing a loaf mold with these, you've got to really keep an eye on it and cut it before it gets too hard. And that is why I have gloves on when I'm doing this because it's not fully saponified. There's still active lye going on, but they are firm enough to unmold. So I figured, I, look how cleanly those unmold. I mean, literally, it's just been like four hours and they're nice and hard. But I'll show you how I clean these up. Um, I have several ways, but today I'm going to use my vegetable peeler. Let's see if I can get you in. There we go. And literally just go around the corners lightly and kind of knock down any sharp edges. Just because I don't like sharp edges on my soap, I think it's uncomfortable. And when you take a bar of soap to wash up with, you want nice smooth, you know. So I think that's just, it feels better in your palm. So I'm gonna get all of these unmolded, get them beveled and let them sit over there on my little rack. And I will come back in and show you how I'm gonna paint the centers with mica. Although I think they're just beautiful unpainted. But I'm gonna add a little a little something to them just for fun. So let me get these unmolded. time to paint the little seeded portion of my sunflowers. So I have my gingerbread brown mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I've got a little Dixie cup here and some 91% isopropyl alcohol. So let me see if I can scoot these up and I can show you what I'm doing here. It doesn't take much. Oh, and I have this little uh, cosmetic brush that is only for soap. I've never used this on cosmetics, but it's just a nice soft bristle brush that I use for painting mica. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in this Dixie cup here. Doesn't take much. And a little bit of alcohol just to wet it down. And then the alcohol will just evaporate off and leave the mica sort of settled on there. And I like to do it while they're still saponifying. It really binds it to the soap. So literally nah, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of alcohol, and that's it. All right, I'm just gonna take, and I think they're beautiful unpainted. I really did go back and forth about maybe not even doing it, but I said I was going to, so I'm going to. It doesn't take much, just a little paint on there. 
and there it is. And it'll dry on and just add a really pretty dimension to these. So I'm just gonna get the rest of these painted up and they will go on the curing rack. Do not let the uh, quick hardening fool you. They still need a full four to six weeks cure time. And then they are fabulous. I love these bars for body, for face. I just think they're wonderful. Oh, here, I have a couple of this style. You know, and if you give the recipe a try, I'd love to hear how you like it and how you uh, used it or you know what molds you used. It would be fun to hear how you're doing it. If you did enjoy today's video, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button, the like button, bell for notifications, all that good stuff so that you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. And I hope that you have a really wonderful day today.